welcome to the first video of my rebooted YouTube channel. My name is Elise and I'm super excited to be here today with you to film this video. For the first video I've decided to do the mid-year book freakout tag which I'm sure you've seen a lot around but I thought it would be a good way to get introduced to each other and to show you the kind of books I've been reading and I love. The first question of the tag is the best book I've read in 2020. I selected a few because picking one was too hard. The first one is The Burn the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. I read this one in January during winter, which was perfect because it's uh, inspired by Russian folklore and it happens during the winter, so it was the perfect vibe to read it. I loved all the folklore aspect and the legend explored in the book. I also thought that uh, the main character, Vasilia, was really amazing and different, very fairy tale like, and there was an, actually an entire fairy tale vibe for this book that I really enjoyed. And I can't wait for uh, the winter to hopefully finish the series by reading the two other books. The Girl in the Tower, I think, and I don't remember the title of the other one, but I think they're gonna be great for this winter. Second book I loved this year would be The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This book is just amazing. The writing is incredible. It's in free verses. It was my first book in free verses, but not my last because I loved it and I thought that Acevedo was so good at using it to express the emotion of Xiomara, her uh, main character, and all of her struggles. As a woman I could relate to some of them, others were more specific to Xiomara uh, culture and how she was being raised and how it was for her to be a woman of color. It was all really, really beautiful and heartbreaking and I felt all the feels and that's all I want in a book. So this one, if you haven't read it, I definitely recommend you do. The last one for my favorite will be actually this little graphic novel, The Tea Dragon Society. Look at it, it's just so cute. Um, what I loved um, besides the tea dragon, which I really, really would love to have one right now. But other than that, they were disabled characters, they were queer characters, they were um, different skin colors characters, like a lot of representation and diversity in a very short graphic novel, and I love that. After that, we have the best sequel I've read so far in 2020. I chose two for this category. First one will be Thunderhead and the Fall in the side series. Now, this is a series that, fo that happens in our future where um, death doesn't exist anymore naturally and it's a few people called Reapers. I read them in French, so I'm not sure of the English word, but basically, basically they're this group of people who have the power to definitely kill someone. And so this series reflects on what it can do to humans to have such a powers, can we have such a powers, but also how it is to have our life ruled by the Thunderhead, which is like the baby of the internet, I like a sentient entity that knows everything and control everything. So it's a very, very interesting discussion that there is um, in this series. And the other sequel I loved is part two of The Way of Kings by Brendan Sanderson. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan of The Way of Kings, even if I've just read the first, um, the first book or the first the two parts of the first book, basically, because in French they cut it in two. Uh, this is high fantasy, the characters are amazing, the world building is so complex and incredibly well done. It's just one of the best fantasy series I've ever read and I can't wait to continue it. After that, we have a new release that I haven't read yet but really want to get to and this would be 
True Life by Jake Kristoff, so the last book in his lifelike series. It's a sci-fi series happening in our world in a very dark future where basically Earth became a junkyard and there are robots and androids and also humans starting to develop supernatural powers. So we have all of that and we follow a few characters looking for basically the truth of their past and sometimes it's painful truth and as always with Jay Kristoff there are crazy plot twists in this series so I'm really excited to read the last one but I'm also a bit scared of what's gonna happen after that we have uh, my most anticipated release of the second half of 2020 and this will be The Notorious Virtues by Alwyn Hamilton Alwyn Hamilton is the author of the Rebel of the Sun series that you can see up there. I love this series and I'm super excited to see what else the author can write. I don't remember exactly what The Notorious Virtues is about though. I think it has um, like a connection to uh, like famous families or social media or something like that, but I'm not fully sure. I just know that I really, really want to read it, basically. Um, then we have my biggest disappointment of 2020. And that's the book I was so disappointed about that I sent it back to Chapters Indigo. And it's A Heart So Fierce and Broken, so the sequel to A Curse So Dark and Lonely. I was disappointed by the story, by the direction the author took by how she changed some of her characters and it didn't fit really with the first book. I was just completely disappointed with this book and I struggled so much to finish it, always hoping to see something better happening, but it didn't. So yeah, at least I could send it back. My biggest surprise of 2020, I have a few books for this category first one would be Felix Ever After by Kissin Callender. Um, this is a book by a trans author and that's the first time, well, the first time I was reading a fiction because actually I read a few other uh, books by trans or non-binary authors in the month, but this was my first um, fiction portraying a main trans character like that and I thought even if the teenage drama was not my thing that this book really brought an interesting discussion and reflection on what are genders, genders representation and how we define them, how we could perceive them. I thought it was really very interesting to see how the author discussed genders basically and it really made me think a lot. That was a very good surprise. After that, we have All Boys Are in Blue by George Johnson, which is a memoir manifesto about how he grew up as a boy, being very different from other boys and liking girl things, and how he felt very inadequate for a long time. Also, a book that discusses about gender a lot and how we put this weight of gender on children. Oh, I really love that too. And the last book that surprised me was, well not the last one, but the last one I selected for this question was The Promised Neverland. It's a manga and wow, I went reading it like with no idea what it was about just because it was recommended by friends and I was not expecting what happened at all. I read like in a row the first eight books because it was so crazy what was happening and if you want to read it, don't read anything about it, just start it and you're gonna get the surprise of your life. <laughs> Seriously. Mm. I'm thirsty. After that, we have new favorite authors. And for this one, I chose Teji Clone, the author of The House in the Cerulean Sea, which was one of my favorite books of 2020. I loved it so much, so, so much, I can tell you. It was just so sweet and like following both adults and kids, so making it a bit ageless. 
We've talked about prejudice and discrimination and what hate can lead you to, but in a very gentle and almost poetic way that I love. There is also um, a queer representation in this book and really a lot of talk about acceptance and accepting what's different. And uh, I loved it and I keep recommending it to everyone because it was so good. I've also started another book by T.J. Klon and I've really decided to read more of what he wrote because I love his style and I've started so The Extraordinaries that's coming out this week and so far I'm really loving it too. We have then the new fictional crushes. I don't have many fictional crushes but I managed to find two. The first one is in the Too Young For Me category and it's Cal from Aurora Burning. Basically, Cal is an elf from space, a space elf. So I think everything is said there. You, you have to love a space elf. And the second one is Run from um, House of Earth and Blood, or I'm sure you also say Crescent City because it's shorter. So Run is a female. male, he's very sexy like all of the males in Sarah J Maas books but he also have like deep wounds inside of him and that's a combo I can't resist and I'm just so obsessed by this character. I'm a bit ashamed but not too much because Sarah J Maas has a talent for writing all the sexy characters, seriously. Um, the new favorite character and I decided to pick Justice from Dear Martin. This is a very short book, but it talks about so many important issues surrounding racism, um, police profiling, and um, a lot of issues that are related to racism. And we follow here Justice, who is a young black teenager. And I thought his character was very interesting in the way he was thinking about what was happening around him and what people were seeing around him. I really, really liked him and um, I'm really excited to read Dear Justice that's coming out soon where it's another black boy writing to Justice. So also definitely recommend you to read this one if you haven't. Underrated gems that you've discovered recently. First one will be a Wattpad book. I don't read a lot and this one was a very very good surprise. It's The Opposite of Falling Apart by Mika Good where we have two characters. One is a um, girl, like they are both around 18 I think, they're going to university. One is a girl that has a very severe anxiety disorder and the other one is a boy who was in a car accident and lost a part of his leg. And we're gonna follow how they're gonna meet and try to help each other and fall for each other. And I thought it was really well written and very reliable, relatable, sorry. And I definitely recommend picking it up if you like contemporary novels. And the other one, I don't think it's like a book, I've seen this book on Instagram and on social media, but I don't think I've seen it enough. And that's why I'm gonna call it underrated because I think it needs more love. It's The City We Became by N.K. Jemison, And this book is just brilli brilliant. I don't know what happened, like brilliant. Sorry. <laughs> so this book is brilliant. It's about the city of New York coming to life. Basically, when you have big cities around the world, they become more than cities, they become entities that are embodied by humans. And New York is such a big city that she needs five bodies to be alive and represent the different areas. And these different parts of New York are gonna try to understand what's happening to them because they woke up as human and then became part of the, a city, you know, like a c the avatar of a city and they try to understand what's happening to them and to fight some evil entity that tries to kill New York basically and yeah, it was really super well written, super good again, another book talking a lot about 
racism and the different forms it can take. So definitely read this beautiful book. It's so pretty also. After that, we have the last book that made me cry. This is actually a book that's not out yet. It's coming out in October. And it's The Magic Fish by Tran Lenguyen. So sorry for the pronunciation. It's a graphic novel. I'm just going to show you on the page. So it's about this uh, little boy who is struggling to tell his mom that he's gay because it's already hard to say, but also because his mom doesn't speak English very well and he doesn't know the Vietnamese word to tell her. And so we're gonna follow how they talk to each other through fairy tales and it was so cute and so well done. You feel like it's a very light read and actually no, you talk about a lot of important things through fairy tales and through their experiences, the mom and the boy. And at the end, yeah, I was crying. A book that made me happy now, I picked You Should See Me in a Crown. And I think you see with the cover, that's a book that's gonna make you happy, right? It's um, about this uh, young girl that needs a scholarship to go to the school of her dream. And to do so, she's gonna enter to become prom queen. But she is not the regular prom queen figure you can see because first she's black, she's more on the shy side and she also likes girls, which they don't know at first, but they're gonna discover through the book. And so we're gonna follow her while she tries to fit into the prom queen type and then decide she doesn't care about it and prefer to be herself. And there were a lot of uh, very sweet moments, but also very joyful moments in this book and really put a smile on my face to read it and I think you can see it when I talk about it. My most, The most beautiful book I've bought or received this year so far and it's gonna be Woven in Moonlight that I received in a book exchange and it's just so gorgeous. I don't exactly know what this one is about either but just the title, just the review of a few friends and this cover convinced me to to read it and I'm super excited. Am I the only one who sometimes get books without knowing they are about just because of any other reason like the cover or what people say about it or that it's from your favorite author? Like do um, am I the only one who go and get books blindly? Please tell me I'm not. Last question. Oh, not last question. Almost. A book that I want to read before the end of the year. I think I'm going to do a separate video for that because there are a lot of books I hope to read before the end of the year. But I picked one for this video and it's The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. From the same author than The City We Became. This one is a fantasy and was recommended a lot also by friends. It has been on my shelves for years because I found it used. I actually have book two and three also. And I think it's enough and that I need to read it, you know. Now for the last question for real, it's the goals that I have for the rest of the year. So for me, my goals will be to go under a hundred unread books on my shelves because right now what? I'm at 120. I was at 150 at the beginning of the year, so there's hope there. Then I hope to still bring more diversity to my reading, always more, that's what I want. And finally, I want to keep up with all the arcs I have to read. I'm not doing too bad on that level, but you know, I want to keep it that way. So this is my video uh, for the mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Felt weird to go back to you filming a video like that, so I really hope you liked it and please let me know what would be your answers for the tag questions in the comments or don't hesitate to discuss any of these books if you've read them and I'll see you soon for the next video. Mm -hmm.